Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this morning on this uh, entry in the Casper College Professional Development Webinar Series. Uh, today's topic will be the introduction to the Alabama College Campaign. Now, while we wait for a couple of other people to join here, I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll uh, just to help me get to know you a little bit better. So you should see a poll launching on your screen now uh, to let me know which part of the state you serve, as well as the role that best describes um, the role you play in creating a college going culture in your school or in your community. So while I leave that open, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Colby Leppard. I'm the Advocacy Coordinator at Alabama Possible. Alabama Possible is a statewide nonprofit organization that removes barriers to prosperity through communication, collaboration, and advocacy. As a part of that work, we manage the statewide FAFSA completion campaign, Cash for College. So just a couple of more seconds here on the poll, see a number of people from Central Alabama as well as representatives from North, South, and West. Uh, a lot of counselors on here today. So just another second or two. And I'll share those results with you as well so that you can take a look and see who else is on the line with us today. Okay, so I want to say thank you to our sponsors. Um, the work that we do with FAFSA completion campaign wouldn't be possible without these sponsors. So thank you to everyone represented here. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started today. First, I wanted to say that this webinar will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. That can be found at youtube.com slash Alabama possible. Throughout today's presentation, feel free to submit any questions you have using either the Q&A function or the chat function. You should see that toolbar uh, within Zoom, which is a software we're using to uh, distribute this webinar. Uh, we will also have an opportunity for uh, you to ask questions at the end of today's webinar. Um, I also wanted to highlight that this webinar series is intended to help equip you, the educators in the state of Alabama, with the tools and resources you need to have success in your Alabama college campaign and in your FAFSA completion campaign. So if you have a topic that you would like us uh, to cover as a part of this professional development webinar series, please reach out to us and you can reach us at uh, cash for college at alabamapossible.org, or you can give me a call directly at 205-939-1408. I also wanted to encourage everybody to share your commitment to building a college going culture on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, using the hashtag AL goes to the number two college, hashtag Pell yes, um, and hashtag FAFSA, those are our official hashtags for this year's Alabama College Campaign. So I encourage you to share your commitment to college going culture uh, on social media. So to sort of set the stage, I wanted to um, start off with a couple of fast facts about the FAFSA so that we're all sort of starting with the same baseline understanding of what the conversation is about. So first of all, the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. Hopefully we all know that at this point in time. Uh, when we talk about the FAFSA, um, students can apply to receive loans, scholarships, grants, and work-study opportunities, but the thing that we want to zero in on here as a part of our conversation is the Pell Grant. The Pell Grant can be used to pay for education after high school and does not have to be paid back. And when we say education after high school, we aren't just talking about the four-year colleges, but also two-year colleges, as well as technical credentials and certifications. So any meaningful post-secondary credential or degree. Most high school students uh, from Alabama qualify for a Pell Grant, and we'll get into the specifics of that exact figure in a little bit, but most students do qualify for at least some amount of a Pell Grant here in Alabama, with the maximum Pell Grant each year being worth $6,195, that's per year. 
The reason why that's important is because the average cost of tuition at a two-year institution here in the state of Alabama is just over $5,700, which means that if a student receives the maximum Pell Grant, that they will have several hundred dollars left over to help pay for things like gas or rent or books or a laptop. Um, so it is feasible to receive a full Pell Grant and still have some extra money left over uh, paying for the average cost of tuition at a two-year institution. And then lastly, the real crux of all of this, nine out of 10 students who complete the FAFSA enroll in college the following fall. Now that's a federal statistic, so that number is gonna be a little bit different here in Alabama, but nine out of 10 students that complete the FAFSA enroll in some form of post-secondary education the following fall is what we are striving towards. So let me introduce to you the Alabama College Campaign. The Alabama College Campaign is a uh, collaboration between Alabama Possible and the Alabama State Department of Education. The stated objective of the Alabama College Campaign is that every Alabama high school senior will complete at least one college application as well as their free application for federal student aid. So the Alabama College Campaign goal is for every student to fill out one college application and the FAFSA. The way that it works is we uh, add create a college going culture as well as uh, create completing college applications in the FAFSA equals nine out of 10 students enroll in college the following fall. The campaign itself combines professional development, which you have already signed up for and are participating here. So congratulations for taking that first step. Um, so it combines professional development with access to data, uh, speaking specifically about FAFSA completion data, but also college application data. Uh, partnerships, partnerships between uh, schools, communities, nonprofit organizations, state organizations, as well as media, both social media and traditional media, and then friendly competition and recognition. When we talk about partnerships, <clears throat> we're talking about partnerships that are created within the schools. So we're talking about the partnerships between counselors and career coaches, but also partnerships with other uh, teachers, English teachers, government or econ, as well as student leaders, and then also coaches. So looking for um, those advocates in your school that will help build that college going culture and advocate for the importance of completing the FAFSA and applying to college. There are also other partners at the post-secondary level, including financial aid officers and admi admissions officers, and then also local alumni to help promote the uh, creation and support of a college going culture in your school and in your community. And then outside of K-12 and post-secondary, there are additional uh, very valuable partnerships such as neighbor neighborhood associations or churches, uh, libraries. One that I always like to point to, uh, banks. Banks are really great partners in creating this college going culture. Uh, I would say, for example, um, I've heard many stories of uh, educators and schools hosting FAFSA completion nights from around the state where they've partnered with banks and asked them to come to the school to help students and their families complete the FAFSA and better understand how student loans work. So uh, banks are a really great and valuable asset to creating and building that college going culture. And then I'd also point to Alabama State Department of Education and Castro College, as well as other nonprofit organizations as great community partners in building this college going culture. So I want to talk about impact. So we're looking at the 2017 2018 school year right here. So two years ago, uh, we had over 32,000 seniors applied to college, nearly 33,000 seniors applied to college, and we had over $60 million in financial aid secured across Alabama. Now that's 2017-2018. That meant that that year, Alabama had the fourth highest improvement rate overall when it came to FAFSA completions. I'll let that sink in for just a moment because it's not very often that we see Alabama listed here in the top five. So uh, congratulations for all the hard work for the 2017, 2018 school year and a great success in having the fourth highest improvement rate around the country. But I do want to unpack a little bit about what happened this past year. So 2017, 2018, number four nationally. This past year, the state of Alabama only had 52% of students complete the FAFSA which is down by almost 4%. That means that Alabama ended up ranking 33rd nationally in overall FAFSA completions. And in terms of improvement rate, where we were number four in 2017, 2018, for 2018, 2019, 
we were at 47th, so only ahead of a couple of states. So we saw a pretty significant step back overall in FAFSA completions this past year. We had over 28,000 students complete the FAFSA and over $69 million in financial aid secured. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click and open up all of these so we can talk about it a little bit, but um, let's, let's sort of unpack some of the facts around FAFSA completions here in the state. 60.3% of students in the state of Alabama qualify for a Pell Grant, so some amount of Pell Grant. The percentage of students that failed to complete the FAFSA last year was 46.3. At a number perspective, that's uh, over 24,000 students. So of those 24,000 students, the number that would have qualified for some amount of Pell Grant is nearly 15,000 students. The average Pell Grant awarded to a student from the state of Alabama is $4,016, which means that last year, Alabama high school students left over $59 million in Pell Grants unclaimed. That's Pell Grant funding that could have been used to pay for college that would not have to be paid back, left completely unclaimed by students from the state of Alabama. So I want to take a moment here um, just to, you know, brainstorm and we don't necessarily have to um, have a chat about it, but I do want you to be thinking about why do you think Alabama took a step back in FAFSA completions for the 2018-2019 school year? And feel free to share any ideas you may have using the Q&A feature or the chat feature and I'll be sure to, to read that aloud, but I do want to just sort of draw some attention to um, to the fact that we did take a step back in the 2018-2019 school year. And I want you to have an opportunity to think about why that might have been, not just at a state level, but at, at your school. You know, what did you see different from last year? And it might be that your school saw an improvement or an increase in FAFSA completions last year and that you, um, you know, don't necessarily have, have a great explanation, but there are were some changes to the FAFSA this past year um, that, that could have caused these, uh, this decline. So continuing on with impact, for the Alabama College Campaign last year, we had 330 schools participate in all 67 Alabama counties, which meant that we had an impact on more than 43,000 students. As a part of the Alabama College Campaign, uh, we had 44 colleges and universities in the state and indeed in the region participate in College Application Week, which is a week in the fall where colleges and universities waive their uh, application fee. We also had 130 high schools across the state have 100% senior participation. For last year, we had 95% of all school districts have access to the Alabama Commission on Higher Education Student Lookup Portal. The Alabama Commission on Higher Education Student Lookup Portal allows for educators to look up individual students um, in a FAFSA portal to determine whether or not they have completed the FAFSA and, and at what stage in completing the FAFSA they are at. We also had over 300 participants trained as a part of the Alabama College Campaign and more than 65 schools participate in College Signing Day. Last year, we had 110 schools recognized for having excellence in early FAFSA completions and were given the Best Hustle Award. The Best Hustle Award is part of that friendly competition and recognition that I was talking about earlier. That's one of the main components of the Alabama College Campaign. Um, the Best Hustle Award is given to schools that see a 10% or more improvement rate through the first two months of the FAFSA cycle. So we know that the FAFSA opens on October 1st each year. So the Best Hustle Award is given to schools that see a 10% or more increase in FAFSA completion rate through the end of November. So congratulations to those 110 schools that were recognized uh, and received the Best Hustle Award from our organization. We also had three schools recognized for uh, Excellence in FAFSA completion and received the Casper College MVP award. The MVP award is given to schools that have the highest overall FAFSA completion rate based on senior class size. So this year, Pell City High School had the highest overall FAFSA completion rate for a large high school. LAMP or Loveless Academic Magnet Program in Montgomery won for medium school. And then Amelia L. Johnson ALJ won for our small school. And then in terms of most improved, uh, we had Shades Valley recognized for a large high school, Russellville for medium, and then Florala for a small school. 
These most improved uh, awards are given to the schools with the highest overall improvement rate based on senior class size. I also want to jump back real quick. As a part of the MVP award, each of these schools received a $1,000 grant to advance the creation of a college going culture at their school from Cash Rich College. And then the schools that received the most improved award were gifted $500 grants uh, for their advancing of college going culture. So why does this all matter? Right now in the state of Alabama, only 45% of adults have obtained a two or four year degree or a credential. Only 45%. Uh, and then also, according to Success Plus, which is the Alabama Workforce Council's uh, workforce attainment goal, Alabama must add 500,000 plus highly skilled workers with valuable credentials to the workforce by 2025. So in order to add those 500,000 individuals, we have to think about creating greater access to that post-secondary education, that post-secondary route. So what is a valuable post-secondary credential? Well, first of all, it's valuable. And I mean that quite literally. Uh, these credentials mean that individuals earn 20% higher wages uh, than individuals with just a high, high school diploma. These degrees are also portable, meaning that they can be transferred from one for workforce opportunity or employer to another. They're also stackable, meaning they can be built up upon each other. So this degree provides as a base, but it can also be built upon or expanded upon. Uh, these valuable degrees are also trackable, meaning that they can be uh, quantifiably tracked by the state. They are also skills-based, meaning they're awarded by professional groups or uh, government agencies, so on and so forth. And then finally, they're in demand, meaning that the workers or employers need these credentials or rather need individuals with these credentials. So next up, I want to draw your attention to something new to the FAFSA this year. This is the FAFSA app. So you know, one thing that uh, the Department of Education has heard uh, from organizations like ours and from educators like you is that um, completing the FAFSA is difficult for families that don't have access to a desktop or a laptop computer at home. So what can be done to make that easier? Well, completing the FAFSA, there's an app for that now. Uh, you can download the FAFSA app. It's called My Student Aid, all one word, by going to the Apple Store or the App Store. Uh, it's also available for Android devices on Google Play. Again, that's My Student Aid, all one word. So let's take a look at the timeline for this year's Alabama College campaign. Right now, we're here in August and September, which is our planning phase. So this is when we should be thinking about uh, what we want our Alabama College campaigns to look like this year and planning out what your strategies and tactics will be for creating a college going culture and helping your students complete the FAFSA as well as their college applications. One pro tip for during this planning phase is for students to go ahead and create those FSA IDs. Creating the FSA ID is step one to completing the FAFSA. Uh, each student will need their own FSA ID as well as their parent or guardian that will be signing off on the FAFSA with each of those students. Now creating that FSA ID can be done now so that when October 1 gets here, the students and their families can hit the ground running and get those FAFSAs sent in. Um, so as I just mentioned, the FAFSA opens this year on October 1. That will be on a Tuesday. So students that are intending to enroll in post-secondary education for the 2020-2021 school year can begin completing their FAFSA on October 1. Next up in the Alabama College Campaign is College Application Week. This year, that's going to be taking place on November 4th through November 8th. Uh, again, College Application Week is a time during the fall when colleges and universities in the region waive their application fee. This is intended to create greater access to students from low income families or uh, first generation college students uh, to be able to pursue those post secondary educations and not have to worry about the application fee. I did want to add here uh, two things. First, uh, we do not yet have a complete list of colleges and universities that will be participating in this year's college application week. We will send that information out via email as soon as it is available. Um, 
but please be on the lookout for that. In the meantime, uh, you can go ahead and let your students and their families know that that date is coming up and prepare for that. The other thing that I wanted to mention about College Application Week is that we have heard from a number of educators around the state at workshops that we've been hosting over the past several weeks that uh, they would prefer for College Application Week to be moved up a little bit earlier. That's for a couple of reasons. Um, primarily, we're hearing from many uh, colleges and universities and educators that scholarship deadlines are um, increasingly earlier and earlier, so beginning of December or even in November sometimes. And this college application week is sometimes a little bit too close to scholarship deadlines. So we are going to explore opportunities to move college application week uh, into October for next year. We are also going to work on making it uh, a two week period so that college application fees are waived for two weeks. If that's something that sounds good to you, please write to us. Uh, you can do that by email or also in the chat feature. Would love to have your thoughts on uh, moving college application week into October and also expanding it to be two weeks. The next notable date on the college applicate or college campaign timeline is November 29th, which is the deadline for the Best Hustle Award. Again, the Best Hustle Award is given to schools that see a 10% or more increase in FAFSA completion through the first two months of the FAFSA cycle. Next date to look at is on March 1st. Uh, March 1st is the FAFSA priority deadline. FAFSA priority deadline is not set in stone. Every school and every university is going to have a different FAFSA priority deadline, but most schools have theirs on or around March 1st. The reason why we like to draw this uh, to your attention is because um, students that complete their FAFSA prior to March 1st or prior to the FAFSA priority deadline have greater access to a pool of funds for their financial aid package. For this reason, it's really, really important that students and their families complete their FAFSA prior to that March 1st priority deadline because it increases the amount of their financial aid package. The next date to look at is March 27th. This is the end of the month, and this is the deadline for the Cash for College Awards. Again, those awards are given to the uh, three schools with the highest overall FAFSA completion rate and the highest FAFSA improvement rate based on senior class size and are, are given grant prizes of $500 to $1,000. Next up on the timeline, College Signing Day. We say this is on May 1st, but it really is what works best for your school. So take a look at what works for you and um, decide uh, what time of year or what time of the end of the school year, rather, um, you could host something like this. May 1 is traditionally when the National um, College Signing Day is, but you know that doesn't necessarily take into account what you have going on, whether it be prom or testing or uh, you name it. So find a date around this time that works for you for College Signing Day. And then lastly, we're looking at June 30th as our campaign end. We say this um, because really, June 30th would be the last date that a student could complete their FAFSA and still receive uh, financial aid for the following school year. It would be really difficult for uh, a post-secondary institution, be that two or four year school, uh, to turn around a financial aid package if a student completes their FAFSA after June 30th. So, you know, really if a student is going to enroll, uh, June 30th is the final, final deadline that we want to be pushing those students towards uh, to complete their FAFSA. So next, I'm gonna take you through a couple of resources here. Um, I wanna talk about first our webinar series. So we already have our full lineup confirmed. So obviously you're here for the introduction to the Alabama College Campaign webinar. Uh, next up in two weeks from today, we are going to be doing FAFSA Completion 101. So just sort of going through some of the basics of how to complete the FAFSA. Then after the FAFSA opens on October 1st, we are going to be hosting a Facebook Live webinar. This Facebook Live event is for students and their families, and it's going to be a basic line by line how to complete the FAFSA. So it's Get Cash for College, how to complete the FAFSA for students and families. We're going to be doing that on Facebook. So I would encourage you to let your students and their families know about this event on October 10th. I will be including information about it in my follow-up email after uh, today's webinar concludes. Uh, but again, we'll be doing that on Facebook and you can find that on our Facebook page by searching for Cash for College Alabama. 
Next up this fall on October 24th, we will be hosting a webinar on advanced FAFSA completion. So addressing some of the more uh, fine, finer points, if you will, um, about the FAFSA. Uh, so some of the more detailed and confusing components are gonna be addressed as a part of the advanced FAFSA completion webinar. November 7th, using data to support your FAFSA completion campaign. This one's a really good one. I encourage you to uh, sign up for that. November 21st, we're going to be discussing working with the LGBTQIA student population. And then finally, in December, we will be hosting our webinar on early messaging and the importance of talking about college and college access at an earlier age. I also wanted to talk about a couple of data resources. Uh, the first one, looking here on the left, this is the Cash for College FAFSA Completion dashboard. This is a public dashboard that's available on our website. You can find our website at cashforcollegealabama.org. This dashboard allows you to track FAFSA completions at the state, county, district, and school level. This FAFSA completion dashboard is updated on a weekly basis. So once the FAFSA portal opens on October 1 and FAFSA completion data becomes available, the dashboard will actually update every single week with FAFSA completions at your school. So you can actually go in and see your weekly progress. Why I think that's really important and really valuable for your FAFSA completion campaign is because you can actually go in and track where your successes are. So say, for example, you have a FAFSA completion night and you're looking for a big jump. You go into the dashboard and you say, okay, great. I had 20% of my students complete their FAFSA this week thanks to the FAFSA completion night. In addition to analyzing successes, it also allows you to analyze your areas for improvement and look for places where you can actually make strides in FAFSA completions. For example, if things slow down in your FAFSA completion in December, as they typically do for many schools, thanks to holiday breaks, uh, you can think about creative ways to work around that, whether it be uh, social media through your school's channels uh, over Christmas holiday, encouraging students to complete their FAFSA, or it could be something else. Every school is different, every student population is different, but uh, the dashboard is absolutely a great tool for you to use in uh, analyzing your campaign successes and areas for improvements. And again, you can find that at cashforcollegealabama.org. I will include a link to this as well as the other resources in my follow-up email. And then looking here at the right, the FAFSA completion student lookup portal. This is something that I mentioned previously in the webinar. This is the Alabama Commission for Higher Education student lookup portal. So in addition to having uh, FAFSA completion data at the state, county, district, and school level, the ACHE portal goes one step further and allows you to track FAFSA completions all the way down to the student level, which is really, really amazing. Um, this basically means that you can create a checklist of each student that you need to go and track down that you know has either started but not finished their FAFSA complete uh, FAFSA. So, uh, you know, for example, if you're sitting uh, in your classroom and you say, hey, uh, Johnny, I, have you completed your FAFSA yet? And Johnny says, yeah, you know, I did complete my FAFSA a couple weeks ago. You actually now have the ability to say, Huh, that's so funny because I'm looking right here at the Alabama Commission on Higher Education's portal and it says that you have not completed your FAFSA. So equipping yourself with that knowledge and that information is really a valuable tool in uh, encouraging your students to complete their FAFSA because you know which student has and has not completed the FAFSA and at which stage they are in completing the FAFSA. I'd also encourage you to check out some of the other resources on our website. If you go to our website, you'll see a little uh, button called I'm an Educator. And under the I am an Educator page, you'll find things like a student lesson plan, you'll find things like ideas for FAFSA completion improvement, you'll find the dashboard, uh, as well as a number of other resources. So I encourage you to go check that out. I would also encourage you to follow Cash for College on social media. We have a pretty active social media presence on Facebook, Insta Instagram, and Twitter, uh, pushing out the latest tools and resources in FAFSA completion, as well as information about the timeline for the Alabama College campaign. So please follow us on social media. I would also encourage you to join 
the Cash for College Educators Facebook group. This is a closed Facebook group, meaning that only educators are, um, are allowed in here. Um, this is private so that you can share thoughts and ideas as well as questions around FAFSA completion with your peers and with uh, Cash for College as well. So I encourage you to find the Cash for College Educators Facebook group. Just go to Facebook and type in Cash for College Educators and request to join and I'll receive that request and approve you to join. So I encourage you to do that as well. Um, on the topic of social media, I would also encourage you to participate in Why Apply Day. Why Apply Day is coming up just around the corner. It's September 20th. This is a part of College Application Week as well as the National College Signing Day. Um, and on social media, we encourage you and your colleagues to uh, share your stories about why you applied to college or why you think your student should apply to college using the hashtag Why Apply. Also encourage you to use the other official hashtags, Pell Yes, um, AL Goes to College, and then also find us on social media at Cash for College AL. And then I'd also encourage you to check out some of the other official social media pages for uh, the State Department of Education, for Federal Student Aid, the American College Application Campaign, and more. So next up, uh, reporting and data. Reporting is really critical um, to the success of the Alabama College Campaign for a number of reasons. Uh, one, we can't accomplish goals unless we set goals. And then two, uh, we can't accomplish goals unless we have trackable data to do that. So uh, we actually send out a number of polls as a part of the Alabama College Campaign. So please be on the lookout for that. We will be sending out information at the middle of the year, uh, mid-year survey, as well as the Alabama College application data. So seeing who participated in College Application Week. And then we'll also send out a final poll at the end of the year with uh, end of year survey and then also college signing day data. So. Uh, please be sure to participate in those polls. You'll be hearing from myself about them as well as Dr. Willetta Connor at the Alabama State Department of Education. I also wanted to add that um, there's really some great value in the media that's provided through participation in the Alabama College Campaign. Um, for schools that are recognized for, as Best Hustle Award winners, we send out media advisories and press releases to local and regional, as well as statewide media outlets, uh, just to recognize the successes of uh, schools participating in the Alabama College Campaign, and then also for the Cash for College Award winners. So um, wanted to highlight as, that as a real asset in uh, participating in the Alabama College Campaign. So qualifying for the campaign. Uh, if your school has not yet registered for the Alabama College Campaign, please do so by October 1st. October 1st is the deadline to join the campaign and still be eligible for those cash prizes. So that's really valuable. I want to make the you're not missing out on that. So if your school is registered for the Alabama College Campaign by October 1st, if you're not sure if your school is registered for the Alabama College Campaign, feel free to reach out to me directly and I'll be sure to, to help walk you through that process. Uh, just give me a call or an email. And again, I'll share my contact information uh, as part of the follow-up email, but if you don't already have that, uh, let's, let's be in touch to make sure your school is registered. Um, additionally, schools must have publicly available uh, FAFSA completion data. If your school is public, then that data is automatically available to us through the US Department of Education. Uh, but in some cases, that has to be self-reported. Uh, we will walk you through that as we go through the uh, registration process for the Alabama College Campaign. Um, and then finally, uh, you must access and utilize the FAFSA Student Lookup Portal uh, from AIC. So if you do not have access to the Alabama Commission on Higher Education Student Lookup Portal, again, please be in touch with me. This is a really valuable tool, really powerful tool, the ability to track down individual students that have or have not completed their FAFSA. So if you do not have access to that, please get in touch with me so that I can make sure you do have access to that and can begin incorporating that into your Alabama College Campaign. So, college completion. So about College Application Week, it's a statewide initiative that's a part of the American Council on Education. Uh, this is additionally a part of a national effort to increase the numbers of first generation students as well as students from low income families who are wanting to pursue post-secondary educations. This is intended to ensure that all high school uh, seniors complete at least one college application 
and it allows uh, us to provide students with the individualized support and assistance needed to complete college applications or to, as they go through the college application process. Um, as a part of participating in the Alabama College Campaign, you have access to uh, the Alabama College Application Campaign Site Coordinator Manual. Wow, that's a mouthful. Um, but as a part of that site coordinator manual, there's included an overview of the campaign as well as templates for uh, personalization uh, that you can use for your campaign guidelines, as well as social media assets and resources, um, volunteer management and more. So I will be sure to include the um, college application campaign site coordinator manual as a part of follow up email. And then also again wanted to mention why apply day which is coming up right around the corner on September 20th of this year. Uh, again, this is an opportunity for you to share your story about why you applied to college on social media using hashtag why apply or you can um, share your opinions on why students should apply to college using hashtag why apply. Again, that's on September 20th. Next up, College Signing Day. Again, College Signing Day is a part of a, a nationwide movement that began back in 2014 by Michelle Obama as a part of Reach Higher and Better Make Room, which you can see the logos for here. Uh, this is an opportunity to celebrate students' commitment to post-secondary education and celebrate their choices on post-secondary education. Um, College Signing Day looks uh, so many different ways and it's really up to you about what works best for your school. And so I just wanted to share a couple of ideas around College Signing Day and how to implement that at your school. That could be something as simple as a t-shirt day where students and um, teachers wear their alma mater or the school that they have chosen to pursue their degree at. It could be family college night or a field trip. It could be a pep rally. It could be door decorating. Um, this is really about what works best for your school, uh, given your timeline and given your resources. But I do encourage you all to participate in this year's uh, College Signing Day. So here, as we begin to sort of wrap things up, I just wanted to uh, once again, encourage you to register for the campaign if you have not done so already. If you're not sure, please feel free to reach out to me directly and I'll make sure that we get that taken care of. I also encourage you to sign up for webinars. Uh, again, we have a great lineup this fall uh, and I'll and be sure to um, include the schedule for that uh, as well as part of follow-up email, but uh, also wanted to circle back on the subject of webinars. If there is a topic that you would like us to cover as a part of this professional development webinar series, please feel free to let us know. Um, would love to hear from you. Any ideas uh, around uh, webinar topics are greatly appreciated. Last year's webinar series uh, was really, really successful, really interesting. We were able to cover some more niche subject areas such as working with students and families with mixed immigration statuses where we brought in an expert on uh, working with students from Phoenix, Arizona to host a webinar. We also worked with the National College Access Network uh, on a webinar around verification. So uh, if those are topics that you would like to see covered again, please let us know and I will be sure to, um, to get something scheduled for the springtime. Again, I also encourage you to uh, share your school's commitment to uh, creating a college going culture on social media using hashtag AL goes to college hashtag FAFSA and hashtag Pellyes, which I can't stop laughing at. Um, and I also encourage you to follow us on social media so that you are always up to date on all things FAFSA. Right now, uh, given that it is September and we still have a couple of weeks before the FAFSA opens, I would encourage you to begin working on your students creating their FSA IDs. Uh, this is a great time to do that so that students and their families can hit the ground running when the portal opens on October 1. And then lastly, I just wanted to take a moment to um, open up the floor for any questions or thoughts. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the uh, chat feature here as well. I know we have a couple of um, comments. So I heard from a couple of people that moving college application week to October. So it sounds like that's really great. And also I think that a lot of people are supportive of uh, college application week being for two weeks long. So thank you for your feedback on that front. 
Uh, that is something that we're going to work towards. So hopefully we'll be able to announce uh, next school year's college application week will be in October and will be two weeks or perhaps even longer. Also, I appreciate um, some feedback on why we took a step back in FAFSA completions. Uh, one participant pointed to verification as a barrier for uh, students completing their FAFSA. So appreciate that feedback, absolutely. Uh, verification is, uh, is one of the huge barriers in students completing their FAFSA, so thank you for that. And then I am going to type a response to this. So uh, just shared my email address there with you on q and It is C Leopard L-E-O-P-A-R-D, at alabamapossible.org. I have all of your email addresses as you registered for this campaign, so I'll be sending a follow-up email here shortly so you'll have that information directly. Um, but appreciate hearing from you, whether it's about the college campaign or getting your school registered or otherwise. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here this morning. Um, I really appreciate your time uh, with us today, and I hope to see you here again next time.